Greetings, fellow detectives. Wizard Kitten here, bringing you a new Nancy Drew analysis video. Today's video is brought to you by the patrons over at Mystique Manor and by all the official fellow detective channel members. If you too would like to support the channel and gain access to exclusive features, check out patreon.com slash wizardkitten to become a patron or click join next to the subscribe button to become an official fellow detective. Lately on the channel, we've been doing a philosophical dive into the characters of the Nancy Drew series, specifically exploring the varying levels of evil of the culprits and non-culprits. Up to this point, we've mostly been focusing on the most evil characters, culprit or otherwise. But what of the other side of the debate? What about the most innocent characters within the Nancy Drew series? This video was suggested to me by some of you wonderful fellow detectives in the comment section of recent videos, and I love this idea. Within the context of a mystery game, the idea of innocent characters is fascinating. The whole point of a mystery is to confuse the reader, viewer, or player so that they struggle to unravel the case and the culprit. It would, therefore, make the most sense in a mystery game to have all of the suspects be suspicious and or guilty of something. Some of the Nancy Drew games do end up doing this, like Secrets Can Kill, or The Final Scene, or Labyrinth of Lies. Other Nancy Drew games, conversely, have at least one character who quite literally did nothing wrong. Sometimes these characters may seem too innocent to be true, in that they're suspicious simply because they're so obviously innocent. We start to wonder what they're hiding, which in and of itself is a fascinating look at human psychology and our ability to trust people, but I digress. So which characters are the most innocent in the Nancy Drew series, and how are they used as part of the stories? First, let's define my parameters for an innocent character. Please remember that my definition of innocent may be different than yours, and that innocence is a highly philosophical concept, with a wide variety of possible interpretations. This is just my interpretation, within the Nancy Drew series, specifically for this video. When choosing innocent characters, they needed to meet the following criteria. First, they can't have committed a crime, either in the past or as part of the present mystery. Additionally, they can't be up to anything suspicious or sneaky. Characters who are following the law but are still performing devious actions would be disqualified from being considered innocent. Second, there's a certain personality required for determining innocence. There may be some characters who didn't necessarily do anything wrong, but their personality and behaviors make it very difficult to characterize them as innocent. Third, characters who are frequently helpful to Nancy have a higher likelihood of ending up on this list, those who provide her with items, information, and allyship. Finally, characters who are not only innocent, but who are also victimized as part of their story will rank higher on this list. From this point forward, there will be plot, character, and ending spoilers for the following Nancy Drew games in no particular order you have been warned. Number 15, Ryan Kilpatrick from The Deadly Device. This case is interesting because Nancy goes into it thinking that Ryan is the most likely culprit. All of the police evidence and her employer's persistence definitely makes it seem like Ryan was up to all sorts of wrongdoing. When it comes down to it, yes, Ryan did build the machine that killed Nico but she didn't build it for the purpose of killing Nico and did it on his orders despite multiple protests on her part. The reason she's so low on this list is that she did still build it and she could have said no. Her reasoning of course is that her boss ordered it and he was going to do it anyway, with or without her help, so she figured she would at least do it right. This is a fair point, but Ryan could still have said no. Regardless, she is innocent of any crimes, and is actively helpful throughout the mystery once Nancy proves her innocence. She's a great ally to have, even if we are at risk of nuts and bolts careening towards us when we enter her garage. Number 14, Leela Yadav from Warnings at Waverly Academy. Leela's personality doesn't exactly scream innocence, which is why she ranks pretty low on this list. She's bold, confident, outgoing, and not afraid to speak her mind, 
personality traits that often are direct opposites to innocence. She can also be mean to some of her classmates, actively badmouthing them behind their backs. However, legally speaking, Leela doesn't do anything wrong in this game. She's on top of her schoolwork, she's a top-tier athlete, she loves to play games with her friends in the common room, she's just going about her life. In fact, she's the victim of black cat notes, and an unverified black cat injury in the form of her sprained wrist, and she's the victim of Izzy's manipulative behavior. All in all, Leela is not that bad, and is in fact a perfectly innocent character. Number 13, Dr. Beatrice Hotchkiss from Treasure in the Royal Tower. Hotchkiss is another character whose personality does not scream innocence. She's bold, intelligent, eccentric, and passionate, but innocent, not quite as much, especially when we factor in that she has one of the all-important medallions and is skulking about Wickford Castle attempting to find Marie Antoinette's journal. She's a little sneaky, but legally speaking, Hotchkiss doesn't do anything wrong. She doesn't try to break and enter like other characters in the game. She's just exploring the castle with items that were already in her possession. She also didn't know that Nancy was looking for Marie Antoinette's diamond or journal because, to be fair, neither did Nancy. Once Nancy shares their shared task, Hotchkiss becomes an extremely valuable ally, even if she does threaten to wrestle us. Regardless, Hotchkiss isn't breaking any rules and is purely on an academic quest, perfectly innocent. Number 12, Dr. Quigley Kim from Creature of Kapu Cave. Quigley and Hotchkiss have very similar personalities. Quigley is also bold, intelligent, eccentric, and passionate, so innocent isn't the word that immediately comes to mind. However, just like Hotchkiss, Quigley doesn't do anything wrong within her game, and even more than Hotchkiss, Quigley is actually a victim in her game, because her entire camp gets destroyed by another vengeful character. Yes, she's sort of spying on Dr. Craven in search of information, but so is Nancy. She's about as sneaky as Hotchkiss when it comes down to it. Mostly, Quigley is innocent, because she's completely out of the way during the course of the game. She's up in a tree for literally the whole thing, looking at bugs dancing. So how could she be up to anything nefarious? Number 11, Mrs. Letitia Drake from Curse of Blackmore Manor. Mrs. Drake may be snooty and dismissive, but she's also innocent of any crime and is actually trying to help most of the in-game characters. She, like everyone else besides Ethel, more or less ignores Jane, but Mrs. Drake welcomes Nancy into Blackmore, actively assists her with all of her weird requests, and provides Nancy with valuable information. We find out during the game that Mrs. Drake has a motive to kick Linda out of the manor, in that she could inherit the estate if Linda were to leave early. But Mrs. Drake isn't actively trying to do this. Instead, she brings Linda food, tries to encourage her, and even leaves little charms on Linda's door as a token of protection and healing. While she's not exactly sweet or lovely, Mrs. Drake is unexpectedly innocent. Number 10, Mel Corbelis from Warnings at Waverly Academy. Probably my favorite character of all time, Mel is also totally innocent. She's more innocent than Leela because while she may not come to the defense of all the characters, she definitely isn't actively mean to them. Mel is mostly content to just do her own thing, and all the other characters are the ones who have issues with her, not vice versa. She just wants to play her cello, do excellent work, and go to her secret cloak and dagger meetings beneath a tree while Nancy is snooping. This is the most sneaky thing that Mel does, and she does lie about it to Nancy for a second, but she quickly comes around and shares valuable information with us. She is also, just like Leela, a victim of black cat notes and a victim of Izzy's manipulative behavior when Izzy tries to get her expelled for plagiarism even though Mel did nothing wrong. She's honest, peaceful, creative, and loves milk and cookies. Perfectly innocent. Number 9, Holt Scotto from Danger on Deception Island. I questioned myself for a bit when Holt ended up on this list because his personality hardly screams innocent. He's gruff, to the point, and highly opinionated, but he's also unexpectedly warm and helpful, and actually innocent of any wrongdoing. 
The only time he seems suspicious is when he tries to stop us from entering the lighthouse. But it's not because it's his mess up there. It's because he's trying to keep a wily tourist safe from a crumbling and unsafe building. He's trying to protect us. He also follows the procedures put in place regarding the orca, even though he despises them. Mostly, Holt spends his time hanging out in the Hot Kettle Cafe, in his wool fisherman sweater, drinking coffee, and doing puzzles in the paper. A perfectly harmless, innocent activity. He never lies to us, he doesn't hide anything from us, and in the end, he comes to our rescue when Nancy fights the culprit out in the middle of the bay. Holt is one of those grumpy old man characters who is actually a marshmallow on the inside. Perfectly innocent. Number 8, Rose Green from Message in a Haunted Mansion. Rose is yet another character who is innocent of any wrongdoing. And, in fact, most of the wrongdoing in the game directly harms her. She only seems suspicious when Nancy finds a huge fire insurance policy, and Rose casually mentions that the house would be worth more burned to the ground. But Rose is not the one who attempts to set the house on fire, and the insurance policy is exactly what it is supposed to be. It's not fraudulent, it's a protective measure. Meanwhile, Rose is just trying her darndest to get the Golden Gardenia open for business while annoying and damaging accidents hamper her progress. She has done nothing wrong, and is instead entirely innocent. Number 7, Kyler Malloy from Haunting of Castle Malloy. Poor Kyler is really in a crummy situation, and it's through no fault of her own. Her fiancé is missing immediately before her wedding, because he insisted on playing a stupid prank that made him fall into an unsuspecting and unintentional trap. Meanwhile, Kit keeps trying to convince her that she actually loves him instead, and it all tries to turn away her maid of honor at the door. Kyler doesn't do anything wrong, and instead sits in the castle by the fire in her cozy sweater, reading a book, trying to stay calm and prepare for her wedding. She's peaceful, understanding, and remarkably patient in her difficult situation, and is completely innocent of wrongdoing. Number 6, John Gray from Last Train to Blue Moon Canyon. John is an unexpectedly lovely character among the cast of big and annoying personalities that end up on Jake Hurley's train. A breath of fresh air, really. He peacefully hangs out in Camille's private car, gathering data and information as a ghost hunter. He's also really respectful about his ghost hunting, even when other people are actively rude to him or dismissive of his work. He doesn't push his beliefs on anyone, but is still quietly confident about his work and very open to a variety of interpretations. He never does anything wrong, legally or morally, and simply minds his own business. He's also a victim when Tino tries to frame him for pulling the emergency brake for literally no reason whatsoever. Tino's a big old jerk. John Gray is a great guy. Completely innocent. Number 5, Patrick Dowsett from The Shattered Medallion. It's hard to imagine Patrick doing anything nefarious. He's just too chill. Patrick spends almost the entire mystery sitting on a rock, chatting up Nancy and Bess about philosophical quandaries, not coherently, but still, and trying to make his girlfriend happy. While Lena may be prancing about breaking the rules, Patrick doesn't. He's an ally to Nancy in the end, helping her and Sonny with the final puzzle. He might not do much or even really say much substantial, but that's what makes him innocent. He's just sort of there. Number 4, Maddie Jensen from Stay Tuned for Danger. Maddie is so incredibly kind and patient. She's forgiving and sweet and protective even to people who don't deserve it. She calls Nancy in to help with Rick's situation, even though Rick is actively a huge jerk. She loans money to Dwayne to help him out of his financial troubles, even though Dwayne is actively a huge jerk. She doesn't say anything bad about Lillian, even though Lillian is actively a huge jerk. Basically, she's nice to everyone, and she doesn't commit any crimes of the legal or moral varieties. Maddie is a perfectly wonderful person, who does absolutely nothing wrong. Number 3, Miwako Shimizu from Shadow at the Water's Edge. Poor Miwako is just trying to do her best. She's lost her mother to a tragic accident, she's dealing with the pressures and expectations of her grandmother, 
She's running the heck out of the Ryokan and doing an amazing job of it, even though it's technically Yumi's responsibility, and she's being actively manipulated by her cruel boyfriend. She is going through it. And it certainly doesn't help that she has to deal with being shouted at by frightened customers on a regular basis. What stops her from reaching the top two spots despite all of these awful things happening to Miwako is that she pretty frequently gaslights Nancy during the game, insisting that she didn't see anything ghostly or scary, even though she is perfectly aware that Nancy did see something ghostly and scary. This is minor though in the grand scheme of things, as we can really empathize with Miwako's situation and the horrors that she is living through as an extremely innocent character. Number two, Emily Crandall from Secret of the Old Clock. Similarly to Miwako, Emily is really going through it. She's just experienced the death of her mother and at an incredibly young age, has had a ridiculous amount of responsibilities foisted upon her. During an economic depression, Emily now owns an inn and is expected to run it. Meanwhile, any money that Josiah Crowley had promised to her seemingly went to Richard Topham, so now she's financially in deep difficulty. Meanwhile, she ends up with a new guardian, Jane, who she has literally never met and who is gaslighting her during the entire game. Jane, otherwise known as Marion Aborn, is emotionally manipulating Emily into thinking that she's crazy, stealing her mother's jewelry, haunting her room via secret passageway, and blowing up the freaking stove, all to try and convince Emily that she is mentally unfit and that Jane should be allowed to take ownership of the inn. Emily spends the whole game sitting in her nightgown, staring out the window, contemplating her own sanity, self-worth, and competency, all because of this awful woman. Emily is not only completely innocent of all wrongdoing, but also actively victimized for the duration of the game. Number one, Lauren Holt from Midnight in Salem. Did I just put Midnight in Salem at the top of a ranking list? Am I feeling okay? Quickly, someone call my tea therapist. Okay, I'm mostly kidding, but I'm probably just as surprised as all of you that Midnight in Salem ended up at the top of this list. But here's my reasoning. First, Lauren Holt did absolutely nothing wrong. She had a lovely relationship with her adopted mother who recently died and apparently left behind a will leaving everything to Lauren, but that Lauren can't find. In this situation, naturally, Lauren puts her trust in a lawyer to help her keep the house that rightfully belongs to her. Her house then gets burned down through no fault of her own, but of course she still wants and deserves it. Lauren now must live in the carriage house, but is at danger of being ousted at any moment. Furthermore, her lawyer proceeds to gaslight her, lie to her about the property, actively try to undermine Lauren's rights to the house, and poisons her water supply with an amount of ergot that could lead to serious injury and possibly death. Meanwhile, poor Lauren, an upstanding business owner who both celebrates the history of Salem while also encouraging modern practices, is just going about her life, being kind and more understanding than a lot of people deserve. Long story short, the culprit is unnecessarily horrible to Lauren, attempting to strip away everything that she rightfully owns and also poisoning her while Lauren does absolutely nothing wrong. Ultimately, it's the physical harm inflicted upon her that puts her at the top of this list. She's completely innocent and the most innocent in the series, in my personal opinion. So there you have it, fellow detectives, my list of the most innocent characters in the Nancy Drew series. I do find it interesting that many of these characters, a third of them to be exact, were characters that called Nancy in specifically to solve a mystery or to help them or stay with them. It makes sense that many of these characters would be innocent since they are literally requesting our presence in the first place. I did also notice that 12 of the 15 characters were women and only three were men. Without getting too deep, I think it's likely that it's easier to make female characters innocent and sympathetic due to pre-existing societal ideas about how women and men are respectively, quote unquote, supposed to show up. To check my biases, I looked again through the series to see if there were any other male characters who could end up on this list, but the only ones who I could think of were actively hiding something from Nancy in their mysteries. 
Think Jeff Akers in Ghost Dogs of Moon Lake, or Dave Gregory and Tex Britton in Secret of Shadow Ranch, or Chase Relaford in Trail of the Twister, or Alexei Markovic in Alibi and Ashes which made them more suspicious than completely innocent. There are actually a lot of these characters, male characters who are definite allies for Nancy, but still end up hiding something or lying to her for a good chunk of the mystery. Seriously, a lot. Jacques Brunet, Nicholas Falcone, Henrik Vanderhune, Bill Kessler, Henry Bollet, and so on and so forth. The list is long. And yet, it seems that female characters were more likely to be less sneaky up front. An interesting observation and something to think about. But what do you think, fellow detectives? Do you agree with my list? What other innocent characters do you think deserved to be on my list? What do you think makes for an innocent character? Let a wizard kitten know in the comments section down below. If you really enjoyed this video, please consider hitting that like button or tipping me for the video with a super thanks next to the download button right beneath the video. If you would like to come join a fantastic group of fellow detectives at Mystique Manor as a patron for the channel, gain access to exclusive content, and support the making of more content like this, please check out patreon.com slash wizardkitten. I also have channel memberships with exclusive badges and emojis to use during streams and in the comment section. If you'd like to support the channel by becoming an official fellow detective, click join next to the subscribe button. Please feel free to follow the channel on Instagram or Discord, linked in the description box down below. And as always, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more Nancy Drew and Sims 4 content. Thank you so much for watching, fellow detectives. I will see you soon.